Oh, it's a nice morning again, Anna. But I think I'm gonna take these wheels, get them out of the driveway. <laughs> I have a 300 foot commute every day. I can't be wearing my legs out first thing in the morning. Okay, here we are. Did you girls walk all the way down here? They must be exhausted. Today, we will start on corn. We are also going to run the strip tiller a little bit, get that fertilizer truck empty right there, finish up some acres, and it sounds like dad is hoping to go out and finish some spots and soybeans. We've got just a few acres scattered here and there where the beans were still too wet. They should have dried out. Now it's been several days, so hopefully we can go out and grab those. For now, gonna fire it up, get a little heat in it. Hey, for people who like the cold smoke, start. This thing is the ultimate cold, cold, cold. Sorry about that environment, we're doing better now. We've had a lot of questions about the Crary wind system and if we would want to put one on the honeybee headers or not. Yes, uh, the honeybee headers, they do a really nice job of contouring the ground, they do a really good job of, of grabbing the beans, even in the short beans. However, with the wind system, sometimes when those honeybees contour, that stainless pan at the front will drop a long ways down. You will get that effect like a farmer would expect where the beans will sometimes bridge up on there because it's so steep. The difference is a regular header a lot of the times won't contour like that. Apparently we got a rock underneath here. That's not right. There's a guard broke on each side of the hump. I just noticed that in the middle of my explanation. This is a rock. You got one somewhere? On the edge of the quarter of Laxton's. Anyway, yeah, if if we stuck with a honeybee, which we may, uh, we haven't decided yet, we really, really like the honeybee header, but I think ultimately we would want to put a Crary wind system on it, just for the short beans and the big contours, and it just, it just helps things feed a little bit nicer. Now we grab the other machine and we are gonna bust into some corn here. And I think the plan is gonna be to take out two or three loads of corn before I move down and get the fertilizer cart going. The reason for that being because then we'll have corn here, dad can work on getting the dryer up and going while I run the fertilizer cart. Windows are clean. Well, for, for the most part, kind of, where I need to see out of them. Engine is warm. I'm gonna hop across the road, make sure everything's functioning and see what we got. Out the driveway and into our nearest cornfield. According to my Connect Mobile, this whole field is all the same variety. And it's an 89 day, so that's good. That should be some of our driest stuff. Hopper unfolding sequence. Complete. Engage the separator. Lowering the head. Engaging header. All units stand by for high yields. Man, I am funny. Just taking some endros here so far, so you really can't learn anything from that. But our moisture, if that is correct right there, is pretty good. However, I don't think my header height control is working. Something, my header height's not working. I might know what's going on. No, I don't know what's going on. I I can't get the computer to recognize this head right now, which may be just in the wiring harness in the connection. I don't know, but um, dealer's gonna call me back. But for right now, I'm gonna hop out and see what kind of a job it's doing. Well, I'm on the factory settings. Just kind of went with what the computer told me to start with. And it looks really really good for not having done anything yet. I think there's gonna be some header loss just because we're drier than what we're used to on the grain. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, how'd you get there? We're breaking the cobs a lot, so I should probably open up the concaves, especially considering we're on the end rows here, so hopefully stuff gets better. I like that. I got a fair amount of cob 
little cob pieces in the tank. So I'm going to open up the concaves, slow it down, close my sieves a hair. What are we at there? Down to two. Boy, that seems really slow. So it's in the main connection. Unhook that. harness has got the pin for an X9 combine and we got to swap that so it's not recognizing the head so like the deck plates the deck plates work but they don't give me numbers it moves up and down but it doesn't the auto height doesn't work so I'm moving it manually so there's a this is the pin here that we need we just got to pull the snap ring out of this one pull this one out and put this wire in somebody did a terrible job of washing the inside of this windshield it was me that was me I did that Maybe this one? That might be tough to get back in. We should be back in business. Start. There we go. I'm going to dump what I have in here, and Dad's going to test the uh, moisture on it, see what our moisture tester says versus the combine. And then while he's testing that, I'm going to run all sorts of calibrations on this header again now that it knows what header is here. And it obviously does. I can tell it knows now. Calibrating. So basically, we just got to run it through. It's fully open, fully closed, fully up, fully down, fully tilted left, tilted right. That way it knows its full range of motion and it understands the machine then will understand where the header is at. So right now, I'm calibrating the fold on it so it knows what is fully closed, fully folded, and fully unfolded. This explains why a couple videos ago I couldn't figure out how to fold and unfold the header. It's because the machine didn't know what header it had on here. And back to open. They obviously built these corn heads so you can run them on either this S series we've got or on an X9. Those are the two big models of combines that Deere makes. Try again. calibrate itself yet these are these actually have a self calibration to them it's showing a good yield but I don't know if that's right or not it doesn't look that good here but it is filling up definitely less cob splits still some in there it's not leaving anything on the cob at all so that's good I like to check out here to see if there's any kernels out here see if it's throwing any over the top those are big old beer can ears. Look at that. 18 around with a good depth kernel. It's not very long, but that's a good ear for our area. Shells off nice. I think it's doing a pretty good job. We'll keep moving here into the end rows and as we get into the better corn, we'll see how it does. There goes grain cart load number one for the year. He's gonna go fill a truck, run it into the pits, test the moisture again. So far we're pretty dry, 19 to 20%, maybe 21 average. We've got some wet spots in there where it's a little bit inconsistent, but not bad for us. Uh, we're, we're, we're definitely going to take that. We're gonna park this back in the yard here. Dad's got another grain cart coming and we've got to switch around some stuff that we're doing here. It was nice to get a couple thousand bushels of corn out. Now we've got enough to get the dryer started, but ultimately <clears throat> we got to get the fertilizer truck empty so the co-op can get that back, get done putting some fertilizer on. And Dad's gonna take that other machine and go finish off those few spots of soybeans also. So as much as we want to keep going on corn and we want to start knocking that out, we've just got a few things to button up here before we get serious on corn. But now we have a little bit of an idea of what kind of yield and moisture we're dealing with and we can really get the process started. Oh, he's full. He's not going to get that grain cart in here. The cobs don't look as bad here as I thought they did in the machine. Maybe those have cleaned up a little bit, but 
I don't like any cob in the machine, but it's better than corn on the ground. Nate is in Bruton on his way here. Okay. So I figured you can take the fertilizer truck, I'll take the bean head, and Nate will bring the 9870 down to Stephens when he gets here. Okay. So I'll help you load the fertilizer, then he will put the head on the 9870. Okay. There wasn't a whole lot left in that truck, which is a good thing that backs up what I was seeing last night where I covered more acres than I thought that I should have been able to, but it was ultimately just because we fit more in the tanks than we thought we could. So that's a good thing. Things are lining up. So I got the fans running. I tested the product. You can see every row is dumping out potash, which is the product I normally have a problem with. However, now the back tank is not feeding. When I run it, it spins, but no product makes it to the front. So the back tank is hung up. The tank lid wasn't on up top. It wasn't building pressure. Man, I like this nifty little handle here. Well, no, no, things still are not right. I guess I'll pull the meter get all full of fertilizer right away. It's such a simple machine. It should not have so many little, I, I just don't, I don't know how it's possible to have this many problems. I'm gonna point this out for anybody that might own a 1910. 100% of the time, I'm the guy who closes these lids because I'm the guy up here filling it. However, this time dad was on top. I swung the lids open, like that. Dad is up here filling it, so he goes to close it like this. Come on. And it closes, no problem. But the problem is, it swung around the wrong side. It's not sealing by about an eighth inch there. I even came up, checked it, redid it to make sure it was right. The problem is this little bolt right here ends up on the wrong side. Come on. Anyway, after I had to go get a hammer and whack it to get it out of there, what I find is this little bolt has to be on a specific side or you're off by a quarter inch. Now it's gonna work. Or is it? I don't know. At least I'm covered in fertilizer already. Would you look at that? It's working. news is row three is showing that it's got a low flow to it the good news is I've got the recon blockage system the monitors to actually tell me that but I've made a round and a half so I've gotten quite a bit done since I was out here messing with things and row three looks good with that product and row three looks good with that product very possible I wouldn't be able to see if it was just putting on a half rate that's I'll get my hands dirty Seems like I just went through some of this. I'm not gonna pull the meters this time. I'm gonna see if I can open the gates and flush them out a little. That has worked in the past. Okay, I can see all that's flowing. Okay, that's flowing too. So, I'll try the back product. Same deal, open them up. That's all flowing. That's all. Well, sometimes that'll work. So we'll try it. Honestly, when I manually flip the switch and watch it, it looks just as good as the other rows. Oh, it's salty. That dust. Um, I don't know if a sensor could possibly go bad. I mean, my history with sensors, I know sensors can go bad, but I've never had one of these go bad. I'd have to talk to Jesse or Matt up at Red E and see what he thinks. Yeah, there it is. Huh. Hey Jesse, how's it going? 
I'll I'll swap that, and if it moves with the sensor, then then I'll just shoot you a message and let you know, and I'll I'll just keep going, assuming that the sensor's going bad. Finishing up some end rows here. I still haven't uh, decided, or it's the word I'm looking for. Diagnosed. I have not diagnosed if I've got a sensor going bad, or if there's actually a blockage in the row. But it keeps going in and out on me. It'll it'll go off for a little bit and then it'll stop, which really leads me to believe it's a sensor. Look at those beautiful stripes. It turned out pretty dang nice. Well, there it is. <clears throat> By golly, I have finished the second field here. Well, I still got 20 acres left in the first field, so we got 20 acres left to do with this. I've got fertilizer coming. I'm gonna fold this up and head home, and we're gonna put 20 more acres in it. I did not flip that sensor because it was being so inconsistent here. I can turn this off. Um, and I was doing end rows, and I just, I, I feel like I can switch that in the yard because I might have time while I'm waiting for fertilizer anyway. So, I have not diagnosed that yet. But I'm kind of excited this year is just a, there's a tile riser in there, but this field is like, it, it turned out nice. It's so much better when the soil is not sticky and muddy. And this is, this is really dry. We're actually getting some chunks in here because we're so dry. We just haven't had the rain down here. It's working a little bit better back home on the other field because we do have a little bit more moisture. Back home. I'm going to run in now and actually watch Onyx open some presents for his birthday. Oh boy. New plastics for the pit bike. What are you going to make it look like? Painting a white, gray, and a shiny red. A white, gray, and a shiny red? Race car red. Race car red. Yeah, that'd be nice. He has torn that bike down all on his own. He's putting, uh, or having a new rear tire put on, a, on the rims. He took the rims over to Dead Eye Liquid Graphics, the neighbor's place there, and got those painted up. He's ordered plastic, uh, well, he got the plastic parts. He's, he's gonna order graphics, and he's doing all kinds of custom stuff with that bike. For now, while I wait for Dad and 2.0 to get back here, I'm gonna start throwing these side grates in the grain dryer so that we can run this truckload of corn up into there and get things fired up. It sounds like they were around to all the fields where we had the little patches of green soybeans left, and they actually got them all harvested. Sounds like most of them were dry enough, so they're gonna blend those off with the beans we got here, and we'll toss them in a bin. And then, and then we're on to corn, like wide open on to corn. I got 20 acres with that fertilizer cart left. It's go time. I got the grates in and the bottoms shut. Okay, that's good. It's almost like it's ready for corn. Right. And almost. Go look at the new screen. You know how to run that? Nope. Can't be too tough. Well, it shouldn't be. Neither should a strip tiller. <laughs> right, yeah. So now we learn how to use our new Sukup Quadra Touch. I'll start with this. Well, that didn't do much. Is well, that. This has got to be on. Hmm. We've got a fault condition. We're learning. It's a. It's a process. New screen, new system, new air system. Fault monitoring, reset. Resetting, thinking, spinning. Boom, there's our start screen. I've got a start screen now. You, know. you want me just to try and see what happens? Oh. Yeah, we want to start. So there's our start menu. We want to go to manual, right? Yep, I think. Or dry fire. I think. Start everything up in manual before we fill it? Yeah. So we know how to. Manual and then load? Should we fill it though? Yeah. Or do you want to start the fans first? Should we call Luke and see if he had everything running or not? Probably. We can hear it running. There's an auger at the top of the dryer there that spreads the corn out evenly. So we're going to dump a little bit in there and it should priority feed the dryer. I hear it. Pretty clearly loaded. You can see the dust flying and you can hear the grain coming down in there. And now in just a few days, all of our nice clean concrete here will be completely covered in corn fine. We got the excavators hauling in fill as well. So they're dumping back there around the new shed. 
darken it up for you so you can see. That's going to level that off a little bit more, make it nicer around the shed. We're going to check and make sure the slides move open and shut here. No. Close the center. And the outside? The center is open. But yeah, the outsides are all shut. Yeah, that worked good. Well, let's see if they're all open now. Uh, they're all about three quarter. I am gonna go hop in the combine right now and fire that up and we're gonna go get some more corn out while we wait for the fertilizer guy to get here. That way we got enough to get the dryer up and go and keep it running hopefully. Are you pumped, Didge? Oh yeah, she's pumped. Definitely pumped. Our fertilizer truck's here, but why didn't we get the Peterbilt when they let us use the truck? Next time I want the Peterbilt, guys. Here we go again. Yield and moisture right now appear to be phenomenal. I don't know if I believe them. We're going to check the weight with the grain cart. That would be a dream, a hard to believe dream. Notice I'm not gonna tell you what it's saying until I figure out if it's true or not. So he's got his, uh, he's got the grain cart zeroed out. We're gonna see how, uh, how much he weighs or how much corn he takes on compared to what I took on. We know that scale is pretty dang accurate from loading trucks with it and going to the elevator and getting it all weighed out. So we'll see how it compares with the weight that I've taken on here. What do you got? With the subtraction of everything, I came up with 17,540. Mm. Okay, yeah, we're, we're off a ways. That's weird. We calibrated it this morning and the next load was almost dead on. Now we're off 1,500 pounds. That that's sucks. what we were off. That's what was still on the cart here that doesn't come out. 1,550 pounds. I'm going to run another calibration. I don't understand why that was so far off because Dad and I calibrated it this morning once. And it, after we calibrated it, it was dead on. So I don't understand. I don't know, but I don't understand these monitors that well yet. Obviously, it's a new machine to us. It's disappointing. So we were off by over 6% on this yield calibration. But I don't know, I don't think it's saving. Honestly, I think the yield calibration in here is complicated enough that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna have to have someone from Midwest walk me through it tomorrow. That's a full cart right there. 76,000 pounds, he said. Oh, I'm waiting for uh... 2.0 to come back from the yard. He's just running the grain cart up into the yard. Dad's watching the dryer load up and getting the bins ready. I'm gonna see what we got going on back here. The sample in the tank is okay. There's still more cob in it that I want. And I've been slowing it down and opening it up a little and closing the sieves. And the ground is as clean as can be, honestly. There's nothing back here. Maybe I should find a better, happier medium to get some stuff out of the tank. Check that out. Just look at it. Would you look at that? How neat is that? That's pretty neat. I'll probably get something for Instagram here because I'm kind of, I'm, I'm an Instagram girl like that. I just flipped the lights on and check this out. I had heard about this a long time ago but didn't, didn't realize this had had it. The snouts, they glow. That's pretty cool. I have no idea yet if there's going to be a large return on investment on that feature, but it's pretty cool. This camera will never do that moon justice. Uh, you guys are just going to have to take my word for it. It's awesome. That is the definition of a harvest moon right there. How fitting. You know, because we're harvesting. I almost forgot to do my daily silent lip syncing where you guys guess what song I'm listening to. Here we go, you ready? That 
That's a catchy one. Let me know which one you think it is. This is gonna be our final dump on the go of the evening here. We're gonna finish this uh, 40 acre piece right here on some of our worst corn, hopefully. And this is this is always pretty poor poor ground, especially when we don't get enough rain. It's just way too dry. But it's been a good start. We've got this 40 acres out now, and uh, Dad actually had the dryer fired up and going for an hour, said it ran good. He shut it down and headed home now. 2.0, Nate 2.0 and I are gonna finish this last round up and uh, just fill that cart and tarp it for the night, and then I'm gonna go in and say goodnight to the kids. Uh, before Onyx's birthday is over here and call it a day. Tomorrow we're going to have the trucks running, I suppose. We'll have the dryer going. I'm going to finish running strip tiller. And uh, like I said earlier, it is go time now. Solid day. Not a lot of acres out, but got a fair amount done. A little chilly out for a t-shirt now. I think so. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go in and eat supper while it's kind of warm. There you go. Better do that. Yep. Did you coming? Just kidding, you can't have any. You got dog food. All right, well, good night. Thanks for watching.